Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, I will talk about, about a precise FMI runner to couple controller models to PDEs. And I will start by talking a bit about what FMI is, um, what it stands for, and what you can do with it. Um, and then give a motivation for writing such a runner um, and outline a use case that we envision for it. So FMI stands for Functional Mockup Interface. And first, I would be interested to know if who of you has, has heard this term before? Okay, mostly people I talk to, uh, as, except of you. Um, where do you know, know it from? Oh, okay, yeah, so, sounds about right. Okay, nice. So, well then it's good, um, then I'll give a first introduction into the topic. So, the function markup interface is a software standard, and it's used for the exchange of dynamic simulation models. It is developed and maintained by the Modelica Association, which also stands behind Open Modelica, um, and currently is the de facto industry standard for co-simulation. And the standard defines both a container in which to ship a code and an interface which the code has to adhere to. And the way this, the FMI is implemented is via so-called functional mockup units. And these units are, in the end, just zip archives that, have, that contain specific files um, and binaries. So that means if someone sends you an FMU model, you can just unzip it, um, and then you will get a file directory similar to this one. So you will always have an XML file, which tells you what kind of variables you can expect within this model and what you can do with it. You will always get binaries um, in the form, so on Linux, in the form of shared objects, uh, on other systems as dynamic, <coughs> dynamic libraries. Um, and these contain the actual compiled code that you will later run. Uh, further you, furthermore, you may get documentation, so for example, reference data or licenses, and you may get the source code as well. But this is not, not mandatory, um, so you can also ship your code without, com without the uh, source code to it. So now we have this FMU model. How can we actually simulate it? Um, in order to run a simulation, you always need a second piece of software, which is called an importer. And this importer has the function to load and extract the FMU model um, and call the underlying dynamic library. So the FMU model itself doesn't have any executable. It always has to be loaded and run by some other software. And in this case, we have um, an importer that loads two FMU models, and now it also has to take care of the co-simulation. So it uh, has to take care of data exchange um, yeah, and numeric stability. And there are different types of FMU models. Um, I want to present one of them a bit further to you, which is the FMU for co-simulation, and especially how it interacts with the importer. So in this slide, yeah, so here the interaction of the FMU um, with the importer is shown. The importer can set input values to the FMU. It can then tell the FMU to advance in time by giving it a time and a step size. And afterwards, it can retrieve output from the FMU model. Um, crucially, within the setup, the FMU itself has to advance in time. So the FMU model has to implement some kind of solver, alg solver algorithm um, to compute the next time step. And also the importer then has to take care of the co-simulation, uh, meaning data exchange um, and the coupling to other models. And this importer can take many forms. It can be a quite sophisticated tool like Simulink, where you can import um, multiple models and then let Simulink do the coupling. But you can also write an importer in Python yourself. Um, and one handy library for that is FMPy. And I just want to quickly run you through um, the basic functionalities. So with FMPy, you can load an FMU model. You can then set some input variables, um, tell the FMU to do a step to advance in time. And finally, you can retrieve output variables. And therefore, um, throughout my work, 
I do use this Python library um, to write the FML runner. So, and after this first introduction into FMI, um, I now want to give some advantages, but also disadvantages for and against using it. So, first of all, it's an independent standard, which means you're not bound to one specific tool vendor. Like, for example, when you use Simulink, you're always bound to MathWork, and if they decide to kick a certain functionality, there's nothing really you can do against it. And that's here not the case because it's developed by an association where there are multiple um, industry partners within it. Secondly, it's widely adopted. So there are many tools already from which you can either export your models to the FMU format or import other models, other FMU models, and then run it with their tools. And um, in these tools, as I said earlier, you do not have to include the source code because um, everyone knows what kind of functionalities they will have. You don't have to um, yeah, give the source code with them. But of course, there are some, limita some limitations as well. Um, as it's a standard the set that sets some rules, you may be restricted in what you can do with your models. Um, and if the standard forbids you to implement a certain functionality, um, that may be bad. And secondly, the, those FMU models are really geared toward ODEs. So you can include PDEs in principle, but as currently there is no data mapping supported between FMU models, and also distributed memory is not supported, um, things like high performance computing are currently not feasible. Okay, so after this introduction into the function Markham interface, I now want to move on and uh, talk about the motivation behind the coupling between FMU models and presets. So this is the setup as we envision it. Um, we have on one side the FMU model, um, and then the precise FMI runner, which stands between precise and the FMU model. So this runner should be written in Python, um, and towards the FMU model, it should act as an importer um, using FMPy and the functionalities I, I explained earlier. And towards precise, it should use the Python bindings um, to take care of the data exchange and the coupling with other solvers. And ideally, um, this would be written in such a way that no matter what kind of system we model in the FMU, um, it will still work with the, with the runner. The software should be distributed via PyPy so that in the end you can just get it with a simple pip install command. Um, and then for, to set the simulations, you would have, have input files in the form of uh, JSON files. So that's the, the general goal that we want to reach. And in my thesis, I'm focusing on a bit smaller use case, which is that we have now a certain assumption which simplifies the test case. So and this assumption is that within the FMU model, um, we will always assume that we have some kind of controller model in there. This means we now know what kind of data we will exchange between the FMU model and the solver on the other side. So we always know that we have some kind of control variable that we send to the, to the solver and some kind of control input that we get back. And although this is a bit simplified, um, it can still serve as a first step towards the general runner. And to give a bit more of a motivation for this work, um, here's a use case that you can already do with this first simple uh, version of the runner. Um, which is an application in wind energy. So here we have a simulation where we would want to simulate the structural mechanics of a rotor, wind rotor, sorry, wind turbine rotor blade um, in an airflow. So with precise already, we can um, simulate the airflow, with, for example, with open form. We can simulate the deflection of the rotor blade, for example, with Phoenix. Um, but with this runner, we could now implement also a controller that, for example, steers the, um, the pitch angle of the rotor blade. 
And this is um, interesting because then you can look at things like, okay, with a certain control strategy, um, how many loads do I have on the rotor blade? How big is the fatigue? That kind of stuff. Okay, um, and with that, I would go over to a little demonstration of where the software is today. Um, yeah. This is the test case um, I want to show you. It's the same as uh, Benjamin Rodenberg talked about this, this morning, um, and which I will now explain in a bit more detail. So what do we have here? We have a mass spring oscillator system without damping. We have um, three springs and two masses. And the springs are ideal, so they are massless. Um, they do a Bayhook's law, um, and they are constrained in a 1D direction. And the whole system has no friction. And therefore, we can um, model the system with this set of formulas. But now this is the monolithic setup, um, which is not very interesting for us because we want to use precise, and therefore we need at least two participants. Um, and therefore we will split it in the middle to have a partition setup. Um, so here now we have two systems, left and right, which um, look almost the same, and they exchange interface forces in the middle. And the way we are going to simulate this is um, we have one FMU model which holds the f which, which um, implements these formulas and we will call two instances of this model um, for the simulation and give it, of course, different input values so that uh, the two partitions are modeled differently. Um, and maybe to, yeah, how is this going to be initialized? Um, so the, the left system, we will have in, in the left system we will have an initial displacement of the mass. Um, in the right system, not. So that when we start simulation, the left system will start to oscillate, and because we do exchange forces, then the right system will follow, and we'll get an oscillation of the two subsystems. Okay, so here's a quick outline of what I will show you in the next uh, few minutes. First, we'll have a look into the FMU model itself, um, then into the settings files. I hope they're big enough. Um, then maybe, yeah, I have enough time, into the precise config file, finally run the simulation, and then we'll look into the results. Okay. So this is the um, directory I'm currently in. Um, and so here we have the FMU model that we will use for the simulation. Again, this is just a zip file, so I can now only just double click it, unzip it, nice. um, and have a look. So this is so this is the XML file where um, the interface of this model is being um, described. So here we have, uh, for example, some flags which tell us which tell us what kind of um, functionalities you can use with this model. And down here, um, the variables itself are, are defined. So, so for example, we know yeah, what kind of name we have to, to call to get the, the position of the mass or the velocity. Then again, we have um, the binaries folder. And within this is the oops, um, shared object that we will later actually call. Yeah. Okay, so now let's have a look into the settings files for the left system. Yeah, that's, it's a standard uh, JSON file uh, where you now can use the, the model names that you saw earlier in the uh, XML file to define um, initial values or model parameters for your simulation. And of course, the same for precise. Um, so we can here define a couple of parameters, simulation parameters, um, with which you sh 
you are probably familiar um, from the courses already. Okay. So now let's run the simulation. So with this terminal, oops, no, this is actually the wrong one. I'm sorry. So in this terminal, I want to simulate the left uh, system, which is why um, the runner software will get the input files from the left system. So mass left for my settings, mass left precise settings. And here we'll do the same for the right system. That's unfortunate. Okay. <laughs> Sorry? Okay, I thought I did a little bit. Okay. That's. Let's have a look. Yeah, otherwise there would be some files here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm completely lost to be honest. This okay. Mm, okay. Thank you. Always good to have support. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so now we couple two FMU models to each other, very precise. Um, so, how does the result look? Okay.
Ah, yeah, you're right. Thanks. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so and this is this is one of the plots that uh, also Benjamin uh, showed earlier, where we have um, the velocity of the position. So this is the velocity um, of the left mass, which is uh, oscillating from left to right. This is the position. Um, and because we can also compute the, num the analytical solution of this case, we know that uh, at the end of the simulation, ideally, um, the starting point and the end point would be the same. Um, here, they are, here they are not, um, but they are very close, which is uh, already quite good. Okay, and now we can possibly rerun the simulation, um, only in that now, let's clean first, um, only that now we do not couple um, two FMU models which is about each other, but rather one FMU model um, and one Python script, which also implements the same functionalities but again, doesn't use an FMU model for the simulation. So I can start this here. Here we go to a different folder where the Python script is and run the right model here. That worked, nice. And the result looks very similar. Um, yeah, which means that we can not only couple two FMU models with each other, but also couple an FMU model to a different solver, or to, a, to a solver of a different kind, via precise. Okay. So with that, I would like to move back to my slides. To review what we saw, um, the FMI runner already has a general interface, um, and it's able to do explicit and, and implicit coupling. In this case, we had an impl implicit coupling scheme. Um, and it's also able to log data um, and provide results in the form of C CSV files for later um, data, data plotting. Some open questions which I hope to, to be able to um, uh, answer within the next months is how to couple scalar with non scalar data. Um, which I will show, we'll talk about in the next slide. And secondly, what does the community need? So if you saw this example and thought, okay, it looks nice, but it's a bit useless, um, and have some better ideas what you could do with it. For example, uh, the, pe the people from marine, en marine energy, um, then please just come to me and talk to me about it. Okay. And during the next case, um, I actually want to get some control algorithm um, in the simulation. What's the setup here? Um, we have an airflow. In this airflow, we have a cylinder. Um, and the cylinder is mounted upon a spring damper system, which means that when the airflow, airflow comes, the cylinder will start to oscillate up and down. Um, and now we want to have some control input to counteract this oscillation so that the cylinder is, uh, in the end, has a fixed Y position. In the setup, um, most components will be simulated with open form, except for the control algorithm, of course, which should be an FMU model. To sum up, um, I introduced the function workup interface to you, which is an interface standard for dynamic simulation models. Um, I talked about the motivation to develop a precise FMI runner and showed you um, what is the focus of my current work to develop such a runner uh, for controller models only as a first step towards this general runner. And with that, I'm open to questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leonard. Perfectly on time, even with the usual suspense that uh, it's traditional to get in live demos. Uh, any questions for Leonard? Um, I don't know yet. Um, I will look for that.
Mm -hmm. So the question was, um, how is FMI connected to, to controllers? How do you get it into there? Um, so you, okay. Um, you can export a simulink model as an FMU model. So that's one, one way to do it. A second way would be um, there's also a, um, Modelica also has an editor, which is quite similar to Simulink in the way, it, it, like it's also a graphical interface. We have drag and drop and uh, you can also implement a PLD controller there um, and export a model from there. Um, but currently, so for this to work, you need a specific version of the, of the, uh, of the standard. So you need um, a model which has FMI 3. Um, but unfortunately, this editor, a, a lot of tools currently only use version 1 and 2 of FMI. Um, but there's currently a work in progress to export simulating models with FMI 3. So then, yes, you would be able to just have a control model in Simulink and export it to FMI. Which is also how you might, yeah, get Simulink controller models to work with uh, with uh, with precise. Any further question? I would have one, and maybe if uh, Claudio, you could uh, already start coming. Uh, so this is uh, now going beyond uh, the usual application of precise, where we have meshes to couple. Uh, what uh, other nice applications do you do you see? That are being enabled by by adding support for FMI. What do you mean? Sorry. Uh, any, <laughs> uh, apart from the uh, mass uh, spring example, mm -hmm. um, do you already have in mind uh, other interesting applications that you could uh, simulate? Well, the the wind energy example that I showed um, is, is one of them, because there we have a lot of uh, uh, yeah control algorithms which are written in Simulink. Um, and you can then export them to FMI and then um, couple them. Yeah. Uh, yes, there is a question. Uh, I was wondering if there's also some application where you have at the one hand like the tip controller and on the other hand like the human muscle. Because like I uh, back in the mask, I have some research about it. Then maybe you have to couple those controllers to human muscle. Uh, so the comment was that you could have uh, a muscle and a PAD control, right? Which basically controls the um, basically controls the brain signal to um, provide the actual muscle length mm -hmm. to like the contraction. Yes, so that you get uh, brain signals and this controls the contraction of the muscle. All right. Thank you very much, Leonard. And